There are threats we can see, but true danger lies in threats that don't announce their presence. A sudden drop in temperature or a spike in radioactivity. We have backup systems in place that will protect us from the environmental shifts, but we still need to make sure that the air is breathable. Whether it's due to maximizing farming and food production or surveying in inhospitable locales, tracking the purity of our breathable air is vital in the future and today. You can build a device that could be used to measure the CO2 in our air on a scientific mission or track unhealthy airborne contaminants. Hey, engineers. Would you be willing to show us how to make an environmental monitor using tools our viewers might have access to? Of course, let's get a view of the workstation. You don't have to be an engineer or a Space Force guardian to be invested in the air we breathe. Here's what you need to start as a citizen scientist. A single board computer, such as the Raspberry Pi, that will serve as the central processing unit. A handful of sensors that measure the different types of air quality. The ones we have here can detect particle count, CO2, temperature, and humidity. You don't necessarily have to have all of them, but we wanted to provide the full set of options. A five volt power supply that's big enough to power both the computer and all of the sensors. A small screen to display the graphed sensor data. The necessary software, which we will link to later in the video. To turn our Raspberry Pi into a particulate tracking powerhouse, we start by wiring our sensors to the I2C bus of the Raspberry Pi, which is how the sensors in the Pi will communicate with one another. Go ahead and attach the sensors and the Pi to the five volt power supply. Once we're logged in, it's time to start programming. Python is the programming language of choice for this task, since we have access to so many existing libraries for communicating with peripherals and sensors. Plus, it's relatively easy to read. Relatively. Now that our single board is up and running, we need to make sure that the I2C bus is working properly. To do this, we run a Python script that searches the I2C bus for devices, and if it gets a response, it will give you the address of that device. If we see all of our sensors, we're good to go. Now we need to get the sensor data from our devices. Here we've provided a small library to interface with the sensors in the easiest way possible. But feel free to take a look for yourself if you're curious on how the lower level I2C communication works on a Raspberry Pi. Now that we can get sensor data, we can log it to a file, graph it, set up alerts based on threshold values, and many more options. Today, we'll just focus on displaying a graph that represents the readings from all sensors for the past hour and changes the color of the graphs based on the values we set as warnings and critical. For instance, if the CO2 concentration goes above X, the graph will turn red to show that it's at unsafe levels. This information is vital, whether you're operating in a low oxygen environment or are wondering if it's safe to go out during a seasonal wildfire. Let's see how our engineers' automatic backup systems are doing their job. The exterior is stabilized, and according to our DIY monitor, the air quality in here is well within safe range. All systems stable. Well done. Ice cream to celebrate? Absolutely. Sweet. A little bit of technology can open up a universe of discovery. This data could be used to trigger air purifiers or open up vents to clear up particulates. Remember, the skills you're owning here are necessary for many jobs, but STEM abilities aren't just highly coveted. They're fun. Some gaze into space with awe and see only a void but some look up and see nothing but possibilities. See you next time.